Further west, Irita has traveled five miles away to Beachy Head. Towering 162 meters above sea level, for hundreds of years, the chalk headland has been a prominent landmark for sailors. However, all too often, the cliffs and the rocky seas below were a danger to vessels, leading to wrecked ships and lost lives. Rita has come to talk to writer and speaker Rob Wassell. Rob, what a location. Isn't it stunning? It is absolutely breathtaking. It is indeed. This is the Beltoot Lighthouse. They started building in 1832 and they completed construction in 1834 and it helped warn um, ships and mariners of the dangers of these shores. Believe it or not, there's thousands and thousands of shipwrecks that litter the coast. And the reason being is because there are very dangerous reefs around here with saw-like projections um, that can rip through a ship's hull. When did they figure out that there was actually a need for the lighthouse? When did they take the action to build one? Over generations and hundreds of years, more and more ships were getting wrecked as the shipping lane got busier in the channel. And that's when people began to get increasingly more concerned of the, the loss of life and also the loss of the ships and the cargo, which were obviously really expensive. It was the wreck of the East Indiaman, the Thames, which garnered national attention when it ran aground in 1828, and that spurred local MP John Fuller into funding the Bell Touts construction. So on this spot, in 1828, they constructed the first lighthouse made out of wood, and it was so successful, they decided to build a permanent lighthouse on this spot. Operational for 70 years, the lighthouse helped to save countless sailors' lives. However, it wasn't perfect. Sea fog gathering at the top of the cliff would regularly obscure the light, making ships vulnerable once more. So, in 1900, work began on building another lighthouse at the base of the cliffs, the Beachy Head Lighthouse, and the Bell Toot was decommissioned, flashing its light for the final time in September 1902. And in 1903, Bell Toot was sold into private ownership. The lighthouse changed ownership quite a few times, and after that, the Roberts family moved in. As soon as they moved in, they knew they would need to do something because of its close proximity to the cliff edge. The average rate of erosion is around 60 centimetres a year. Originally, when they built the lighthouse, there was um, a sufficient amount of land in front of it. But over time, that area was diminished. And um, as the lighthouse got close to the edge, that's when they knew it was going to be really dangerous. One fateful night, they were in bed and they heard this rumble like thunder and they knew exactly what had happened. And so in the dead of night, they collected their clothes and bits and pieces together and they went to stay with family in Eastbourne. And it wasn't until the next day that they came back that they saw that 15 metres of cliff had just gone in one go. What, right in front of it? Yeah, massive, massive cliff fall. In 1998, the lighthouse was just four metres from the cliff edge and a 61 metre fall to the rocks below. The only way to save the Grade 2 building from tumbling into the sea was to move it, a major engineering challenge. Over the course of three days, engineers moved the structure 17 metres inland to its new location. So when they lifted the lighthouse up and moved it back into position, it was 850 tonnes of lighthouse they moved. And amazingly, it was so successful that even the plates and the covers didn't move and were unbroken. No way. They moved 850 tonnes without smashing a single plate. Indeed. And that just shows how precise the whole operation was. Nowadays, the lighthouse is a luxury B&B, &B, and it certainly gives a whole new meaning to a room with a view. Ah. What a view. Isn't this amazing? Ah, there's nothing like the fresh sea air. But James is...